This episode is going to be a little bit different because I have an announcement to make. I guess you can say this is breaking news. I am taking the NBA Draft Junkies brand, if it is a brand at this point, but I'm taking NBA Draft Junkies and my talents to Europe for this basketball season. What is up? What is up? My name is Rafael Barlow. I run the website NBA Draft Junkies. And I want you guys to follow me. I'm about to do something crazy. I'm about to take this crazy travel experience. I'm gonna pack up my things. I'm gonna move across the pond. I'm gonna move to Europe to scout international basketball players. For those that have been following the channel or my, or my podcast, you know I have a passion for international prospects. I've kind of made a name for myself and kind of created a niche. Who are some you know, some sleeper type second round picks that the Mavericks could go after. Well, let's give a shout out to Raphael Barlow uh, from the Locked On NBA Draft podcast, who has been pushing Renz Blindberg from Belgium all year, was not on a lot of NBA radar screens, uh, but I think Raphael was right about him. As this American that shows interest in international basketball prospects or NBA prospects, I first fell in love with the international game when I lived in Istanbul, Turkey back in 2016. I just decided, you know what, it's time for me to bet on myself. It's time for me to make this move. I'm used to traveling, I'm used to living abroad, but I have not left the country in almost two years, which I'm itching to get back over there. But what makes this experience even crazier is I'm gonna pack up and move to Europe. I'm gonna scout basketball games. I'm gonna do it on a modest budget. I mean, I have a certain budget that I have to maintain. I'm gonna travel by train, bus, whatever, all over Europe to watch basketball players, give scouting reports, put them on my website. But I'm gonna do all of this as a newlywed. Now, I've never been married before. My future wife has never been married before. So this is all gonna be new. I know married couples talk all the time about the challenges of the first year of marriage. I've traveled before, but this is gonna be my wife's first time traveling internationally. So I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it's gonna be raw. We're definitely gonna show some of the challenges, some of the obstacles that we're gonna face. We may struggle financially with money, trying to make the budget. So I'm gonna document this whole experience. So stay tuned and, and just enjoy the ride. I don't know where this ride is gonna take us. And here's the part that I failed to mention. I'm actually getting married in Paris in three days. It's gonna be a wild ride, so stay tuned. But I gotta get packing. I got less than 24 hours before I leave. I have work to do, I have projects that I need to complete. I haven't even started packing. I just kind of got like my stuff laid out. My fiance, she hasn't even packed either. I'll introduce you to her shortly. Kind of surreal to me at the moment. I don't think that it's hit me quite yet. So it just feels surreal like we've talked about it and I'm kind of prepared, but I don't know if it'll be real until I actually get on the plane. Just seeing parts of the world that I've never seen, um, parts of the world that I never thought about seeing. Um, no, I'm not nervous. Um, I'm not nervous. Thinking about the weather, I'm always cold, so cold weather is always on my mind. <laughs> what is up? <laughs> How you feel? I feel excited and a little bit tired now, finally. The sleep is starting to hit me. So why are you sleeping? Because I didn't sleep last night. I slept like 45 minutes. So I haven't been asleep since Tuesday night. Why you ain't been asleep? I had to work. I had to try to make sure I was in a good place. So you know, I can get it off my mind. I'm working for the man. That's how it is when you work for the man. 
Not yourself. How do you feel right now? I feel excited. I'm ready. Like, I want to be there already. You got like nine hours. I know. <laughs> I know, but I want to be there already. I'm excited. Very excited. My flight was great. I'm so excited. <laughs> I got a little energy now. I slept a little bit. Not enough, but a little bit. I want to get some breakfast. I'm a hungry, but need to get some cream. Banana Nutella? No. <laughs> Bonjour. Good morning. It is bright and early in the morning. I'm here at my wedding day in Paris. Can't believe I'm getting married. Can't believe I'm here. But if you look, I'm here. See that? See that in the background? There is my beautiful bride. So getting married in Paris was totally my idea. I wanted to come up with a a, a proposal in a sense like I, she had to agree with it of course but I wanted to present her with an idea to get married something that did not cost a lot of money but also when you think of Paris you think of romance it's like one of the the most romantic places in the world it's a city that a lot of people have on their bucket list to go to especially women like you know women love a, a good romantic uh, fairy tale in a sense and so I thought you know what why not Paris I knew that if we got married in Paris we wouldn't have to pay for a venue we wouldn't have to come up with like the big list of people to invite because weddings are expensive I know friends that spent 20 30 even a hundred thousand dollars on a wedding and and just the way I think, it's like, why spend that much money on the wedding when you could save that money, you could spend that money traveling around the world. And so when I proposed back in August, the same day I proposed, I presented the idea to her and she agreed. Another reason I wanted to get married in Paris is because I wanted to get married by the end of the year. I knew that I had this goal of living overseas and scouting this basketball season and I wanted Shay to come along with me, but I didn't want her to come along with me and us live together if we're not married. So there's no other or greater way to show a commitment than a marriage. And so we went ahead, we got married early in the morning. It was at 7.50 a.m. It was pretty cold. It was 36 degrees to be exact. I mean, it, it was a great day. It was, it was a great day for me. Obviously, it's gonna be one of the most, if not the most memorable day of my life, but I think Shay was pleased and, and getting married in front of the Eiffel Tower, incredible. And then you see the pictures. You, you see how well the pictures came out. Who else do you know gets married and then goes to a basketball game to scout at the same day? That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm on my way to this under 19 Paris basket game. And at the game, I'm gonna scout, look for some young players for my um, for my website, some guys that I that I want to create some content on. And then after that, I am going to the Asvel Paris Basket Oda Teams game. I didn't realize it starts at 
nine o'clock, like nine o'clock. I didn't realize it starts at nine o'clock. So it's gonna be a long day. Go to the game, watch the, the junior team game. Then after that, come back here, get my wife. Gotta get used to saying that, get my wife, bring her back. And then we'll go to the, to the I wanna call it the varsity game, but we'll go to the, to the big game later on tonight. Stay tuned, I'm on my way. I gotta figure out how to navigate this train system. Well, I am late to the game because there is a exit called Port d'Italy and Place d'Italy, and they're on the same route. I got off on the wrong one. Now I'm backtracking. I was on schedule to be there a little early. Now it looks like I'm gonna be about 10 minutes late. So this is like my first of many journeys on a train, and I'm already late to my first game, but I'm gonna figure it out. So after the wedding, I mean, this, within a few hours, I, I went to go scout basketball. I mean, this is what I love. This is what I'm, I'm passionate about. I'm very, 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 very thankful that I have a wife that understands my vision and, and supports me in, in every way. And so, you know, I don't know too many guys that can get married and then on their wedding day, they can go out and, and work or scout basketball. And even though for me, it's work, I think in a lot of cases with men that are like chasing a dream or a goal, whether it's music or even like playing video games or something like that, I think a lot of times women may look at it as a hobby as opposed to a job. So, you know, if a guy did construction and he had to go work construction on his wedding day, I mean, of course, a woman probably wouldn't be too pleased with that, but she'd be understanding because she would think like, okay, he owns a construction company, that's his job, or he works for a construction company, that's his job. But when it comes to like basketball or music or, or, or dream, I think a lot of times women may think it's a hobby and it is not as important as working for the man. So I'm blessed and fortunate that Shay understood that I, I wanted to go watch these basketball games and so I left and I went to go scout two French prospects that I think have NBA potential. They didn't disappoint. Unfortunately, the game was somewhat of a blowout, so I did not get the opportunity to really judge them against tough competition. But I, I liked what I saw. Killian Malawa is a guy that kind of reminds me of a young Andrew Wiggins. He has the physical tools and, and the gifts. He's, he's very athletic is able to score without having to dominate the ball. I think that he just has the, the upside to be a, a an NBA player. I mean, he has the positional size, he has the athleticism, he has some of the intangibles, he plays hard, um, he's really good in transition as far as scoring. And then there is Zachary Reesacher, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I think this kid has the potential to be something special. He is the best player, or number one ranked player in this age group. I don't wanna make a lazy comparison, but I see like a, a, a little bit of Evan Fournier's game mixed with Nick Batum. I think that he has the potential to stretch out and be bigger than Fournier as far as size. I think this kid is, like I said, I think he is special. He is someone that I'm definitely going to be tracking and following throughout his progress. He's only 16 years old now, and he had a good summer playing at the under 16 team. Actually, both guys played on the France, on, on the French under, under 16 team. But these are two of the best players in, in their age group in, in Europe, and so I felt like it was a must for me to, to watch them play. Well, that wraps up episode one. You met my beautiful wife. You saw the wedding. You saw the amazing pictures. Shout out to Paris Photo Love. If you ever go to Paris and you want some of the dopest photos, reasonable price, just overall great person, go to Paris Photo Love. You saw me go scout some 16 year olds on my wedding day, but stay tuned for episode two, where we go to the biggest, basketball game as far as scouting prospects in France this season I get a chance to watch Victor Wimbayama who is the projected number one pick in the 2023 NBA draft face a player by the name of Ismail Kamagate who I think is rising up draft boards 
stay tuned for episode two. 